Hi, very simple tune for you today because I'm going to uh, show you how we read this in my tablature and in the actual musical notation as well, which you can print out from my website. So you'll need to print out two sheets today. Uh, this is the Aubrey May song and um, I got this from my good friend Lester Bailey over on uh, Melodian.net. Uh, uh, there's a great video of uh, Aubrey Morris singing and playing this at sunrise on May the 1st, 2001, and I'll try and give you the link to it uh, on, this, on this video. Um, the song was collected by the squire of Aubrey Morris from an old resident of that uh, village, which is in Hertfordshire in England. Anyway, it's a lovely little tune. It really struck me when I first heard it and saw it being played. And it's one that I learnt very early on in my uh, concertina career, which is just three years old at the time of doing this video. But anyway, it's in the key of D major. Um, let's look at the actual sheet music. Now, you might remember from a previous video that I said that all the notes on the uh, right-hand side are in the spaces on the stave, and all the notes on the left-hand side are on the lines. We're in the key of D major, so we've got an F sharp and a C sharp. If we look at the chart on the, the right-hand side of the page, it shows us all the notes in order uh, in ascending order that we're going to play in this tune and it just so happens that they're all the notes in the scale of D major. So those notes are D on the right, E on the left, F sharp on the right, G on the left, A on the right, B on the left, C sharp on the right and D on the left. So that gives us this sound. The classic scale of D major. So if you look at the actual music you can see that there are a bank of five lines that's called the stave. That curly sign at the beginning is called the treble clef that concertina music is written in, don't worry about that. You can see two kind of crisscross signs, they're the sharps. Uh, one's in the third space up so that it sharpens all C's automatically and one's on the top line so that sharpens all F's automatically. Um, there is a section on my Daddy Longlist uh, website that deals with um, music theory. Uh, you go to the music theory etc menu and then you need to download all the basic music theory information sheets and that'll tell you everything you need to know about reading music uh, to the level that you need to uh, to play these pieces. So I'm not going to go too deeply into this. 4-4 uh, four, four means there are four uh, quarter notes per bar, four beats per bar if you like. And you can see the first note is in the second space up and it's the A. If you look at the tablature you can see which A it is. And it's on the right hand side and you're going to use your index finger on it. Now you play that note again and then you have G on the left hand side. Uh, then you have F sharp on the right hand side and D on the right hand side. So your first section is now, if you look at my tablature, you can see the counting is 1, 2, and 3, 4. In the music, you can see you've got the first note as a stem, and the head of the note is filled in, but it's not connected to any other note, so that means it's a crotchet, it lasts for the whole of the beat one. Then you've got two notes that are joined together, those are quavers, that's your two and count, if you like. Then you've got two more crotchets, so you count that 1, 2, and 3, 4. Bar 2 now. Three notes, G, F sharp, E, so that's G on the left hand side, uh, F sharp on the right, E on the left. Now you've got crotchet, crotchet, so a two notes with stems and the heads are filled in, but the last note of that bar, the head is not filled in. It's because it's a minim and it lasts for two beats. And if you look at my tablature, you can see that there are two cells merged there for beats three and four that bears that out. And then you have the third bar that goes like this. Timing is one, two, three, and four. Uh, you're on the second stave, the second bank of five lines. You've got crotchet, crotchet, two quavers, crotchet. So it's not the same setup as the first bar, is it? Because the quavers come on beat three. Timing one, two, three, and four. So that's A, A on the right hand side, B on the left hand side, C sharp on the right hand side, which is obviously a black note accidental. It's the third one uh, from the back. 
right in the middle of the, the set of five. So third finger, and then D, that's a, an octave higher than the, the first D we played on the left hand side here. So there's the first one, and here's the one that, that's an octave higher. Now bar four, this is the second stave of music, second bar, and you've got now the timing is one, two, three, four, and. Now that first note, if you look at the music, it's a minim, but it's got a dot by the side of it. The dot adds on the half as much again. So instead of it being worth two beats, it's worth three beats. So again, look at my tablature. You can see that the three, first three cells are merged. So the A lasts for three beats. And then on the fourth beat, you split that into two quavers, F sharp G. One, two, three, four, and. Okay? Uh, then you've got a nice little run of quavers. And then two crotchets. So you've got one and two and three, four. A, B, A, G, F sharp, E. So A on the right, B on the left, A on the right, G on the left, F sharp on the right, E on the left. So the counting is one and two and three, four. So you've got four quavers all in a row then, and they're all joined together. And the counting for those quavers is one and two and, and then you've got three, four. So you've got uh, notes that are worth half a beat. There's four of those, and then two notes that are worth one beat each, or if you like, four quavers and two crotchets. And then we've got something different again. Now this is the third stave, second bar. On our tablature, it's one, two, three, four, five, six bars down. Now you've got two low Ds, followed by a D an octave higher. So you have two Ds on the right hand side, and one on the left hand side, and then you've got a B on the left hand side. Now the timing, two crotchets, one, two. Now we had a dotted minim earlier, this is a dotted crotchet and it's worth one and a half beats. And then you've got the B on the end there, which is a quaver, only half a beat. My tablature will help you with the timing. Counting is one, two, three, four, and. Two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and. So the, the, the D, the higher D there, lasts for the whole of beat three and half of beat four, and the second half of beat four is the B. And then we have this run of quavers again. Same as the bar above it in the music there, if you look, this is the one but last bar. And then on the very last bar of the tune, you've got a D, the low D on the right hand side. And if you look at the note in the music, it has no stem, it's not filled in, it's the only note in that bar, therefore it must be worth four beats. Comes in on beat one and it's called a semi breathe so in that short piece of music, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars of music, you've got all kinds of stuff you can learn. Time signatures is the key of D major, so all the Fs and the Cs are sharpened. Um, you've got crotchets and quavers and min uh, dotted minims and dotted crotchets and semi breeze and bar lines. Every time you get a uh, vertical line coming down, that's the end of a bar. As I say, the set of five lines is called the stave. So I'm not going to go too deeply into this, but you can find out everything you need to know, as I say, from those information sheets. So that is the Aubrey May song, and that's the end of today's lesson, and I hope you enjoyed it.